What's up everyone, it's 82, back with another flashlight review. This time it's the Wuben E7. Like my previous videos, we'll be taking a look at all the functions and features, also testing the durability and doing some night shots. Let's get into it. Inside the package you'll find the manual, flashlight, two O-rings, lanyard, USB-C cable. Let's get rid of this warning label. It's just telling us that there's a film on the battery. Speaking of which, the battery is included. It's a 18350. Let's take a quick tour of the flashlight. Dual Osram LEDs on the front of the flashlight. On the top, we have the USB charging port, as well as the power button. A nice clip on the side of the flashlight. The bottom of the flashlight is magnetized. There's also a lanyard hole. Charging is done by USB-C. The flashlight still works when charging. This is a small little flashlight. It's 2.3 inches tall, almost an inch wide and an inch thick. The entire package with battery comes in at 80 grams. This flashlight is very easy to use. A single click to turn on the flashlight. Holding down would change the brightness levels. Double click for the turbo mode, which is the brightest setting. Triple click to turn on the strobe mode. Triple click again for the SOS mode. To lock the flashlight, click it four times. Repeat the process to unlock. Check out all the accessories you can get with this flashlight. You can buy them as a package with the flashlight or individually. First up, we have the battery extension tube. With this accessory, we can now use an 18650 battery, which should double the runtime of this flashlight. This part is $10, which is a bit expensive in my opinion. It does come with its own O-ring. All you have to do is remove the end cap and thread in the new extension tube. Insert the new 18650 battery, which isn't even included with the accessory, and use the old end cap. With the extension tube installed, the flashlight is now 3.6 inches long and weighs in at 109 grams. What I don't like about the extension tube is that it doesn't line up with the flashlight. Next up is the head strap. This turns the flashlight into a headlamp. It's a great addition to the flashlight. It's a tri-band head strap, but you can remove the top band. To install, just slide the butt of the flashlight into the ring. You should hear a click. It's very secure. You can rotate 45 degrees up or down. And finally, the last accessory to make this package complete is the sensor. Super easy to install. It comes with a USB cable. Just plug in the USB-C cable into the sensor. The other end of the cable goes into the charging port of the flashlight. Clip the sensor to the headband and that's it. With the sensor installed, you can control the flashlight button free. You get the same functionality as the button. A simple wave of the hand will turn the flashlight on. Holding your hand on the sensor will change the brightness settings. Double wave to turn the flashlight to turbo mode. Triple swipe for the strobe, and triple swipe again will turn on the SOS mode. Four swipes to lock. To unlock, you just have to swipe it four times again. This is what the flashlight looks like with everything installed. I wish you could remove this dust cover, it's just flapping around. With the battery fully charged, let's see how long this flashlight can run for. We're using the battery that came with the flashlight. Starting the flashlight on turbo mode. At 1 minute, the E7 dims down to high mode. Another step down occurred at the 2 minute marker. The light is now at medium. The flashlight stayed at medium until the 1 hour and 24 minute marker. At this point, it stepped down to the low setting and turned off at 1 hour and 27 minutes. Let's see how well this flashlight holds up to daily abuse. We're gonna run it over, which is going to test the build quality and the scratch resistance of this flashlight. Mm -hmm. 
Here are the results of that test. There is a bunch of indentations on the side of the flashlight. The anodization could be better. Next up is the impact test. No issues with the impact test. I think the workbench took more damage than the flashlight. This is the drop test. Drop this flashlight 50 times, 5 feet up in the air each time. It did well, just a couple of nicks on the corner of the flashlight. This flashlight is IP68 rated, so it shouldn't have any issues with the water test. Let's freeze it and see if it survives. Before freezing the flashlight, I put the flashlight on the lowest setting. Surprisingly, it's still on. It's been frozen for 4 hours. Let's dethaw it and submerge it into hot water. The hot water temperature is 133 degrees. It's not boiling, but it's still pretty hot. Pass the water test with flying colors. Let's take this flashlight out into the backyard and test the brightness. This flashlight has a very nice beam. This is the flashlight on low. Switching to medium. Changing it to high. This is the flashlight on turbo mode. Here's what the strobe looks like. It looks pretty intense. And here's the SOS mode. The flashlight is on high. I have it on my headband, using it as a headlamp. This is on medium, still very usable. We're now standing 15 feet away from a tree. The flashlight is on low, medium, high, and turbo. Now we're shining the flashlight 5 feet away from the ground. This is low, medium, high, and turbo. This is a great flashlight in a small package. It's super bright with a decent run time. It can run a lot longer with the battery extension tube. However, the battery tube doesn't line up with the flashlight. Speaking of which, I think $10 for the sensor is decent, but $10 for the headband or the battery tube feels like it's a bit too much. As a complete package with all the accessories, there's a lot of options at that price point. I'm not going to hesitate to spend $24 on a flashlight, but I might be a little hesitant to spend $60 on the package which doesn't even include the 18650 battery. So you still have to get a new battery, adding to the cost. It did great on the durability test, ran it over with the car, and dropped it 50 times with no issues. Just a couple bumps and scrapes, froze it for 4 hours, and the light is still on. If you found this review helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video.